Well, you haven't seen too much of me lately, but there are some good reasons for that. But first, let's see if I can start this van. Oh, it works. Not only have I been all over the universe trying to get some vintage bikes restored I happen to have, and of course, uh, recovering from that little hospital procedure and then all the nasty medication afterwards. So like I was showing you in the last video, I have been working away like crazy for Exoticon, which is just a week away on all these crazy masks over here. It's Sunday, June 9th, and after that, I gotta be show ready. Consequently, due to the recovery, due to the working away at all the masks, including these Disney replicas I was talking to you about, everything around me is a mess. And then on top of that, like I was saying, I gotta get ready for an epic road trip. Not in the van, not in a old reliable, as I like to call her. So don't worry about that, but a road trip nonetheless, which means I'm trying to finish all this stuff, not just for Exoticon, but everything else I've got to do before I've got to leave, including signing and personalizing all the books I could possibly do before I hit the road. Add to all that, that a neighbor found a little kitten under their house, which we're taking care of, and it's been pretty crazy and busy around here. So busy, in fact, that even though I should have done it a long time ago, I haven't even had a chance to put any of these books into our antique store booth down at the Orange Circle. So that's why I fired up old Reliable here. <laughs> we're gonna head out. Yes, the van is running. Yes, the windshield is still dirty because, of course, the windshield wipers don't work, but no, I'm not taking it across the country. You see, my son just finished his junior year of high school. He's 17 now and the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. And I always planned before he left high school to drag him out of the house uh, of a summer and take him out on the road with me. Now I hoped he'd be driving by now, but he was struggling with his grades a little bit and I'm happy to say that I backed off of doing the driving school and he got really good grades by the end of the year. So he won't be driving with me, but he will be riding along with me on a journey. Now, obviously I try to go on, you know, cross country or big long road trips every single year. It's part of my duty, as you know, but this trip is a little more special because I've got the boy out with me and he's gone up and down the, the West Coast, but he's never really been out you know, sort of east of Arizona ever before with me. Which is part of the reason that I've been working so crazy hard on all these tiki masks for Exoticon. I gotta sell them because uh, that's gonna help fund the trip a little bit. It gets twice as expensive when you bring uh, another basically adult now with you the whole time. And uh, that is also why I'm not taking the van. The trip is too important to risk this thing breaking down and also to have no windshields during summer storms. We plan on being out on the road for several weeks, so uh, it's imperative that I get all this stuff into the antique store while I still can. I've been trying to sign as many books as I can so people can still order a signed one. There's only a couple days left to order personalized if you haven't. I'm just trying to get all the work done that I can and uh, leave everything with as few regrets and oh darn it as I can. Anyway, so we gotta take this stuff inside. Now normally I wouldn't film just like some little errand like this here. Uh, normally I would be filming some kind of epic adventure, road trip, or you know, whatever like that. But I'm also, I happen to be testing a new camera bought for the purposes of said trip because London knows that we're both gonna be filming pretty constantly. So we're gonna be filming the whole journey. We're gonna be doing videos every single day. I don't know about uploading or getting them uploaded, but certainly filming them. Okay, here we go, the antique station. I feel a little bit prodigal because I haven't been in here for a while. Hi, Marty. Hi, Donna. But I gotta bring books to the booth. Oh yeah, I do need the key. Okay, I got the key. I got the books. Oh my gosh. And here we are. We're back. Good old booth 96 as seen on Random Land. You know, we've never really given this booth a name and I've been thinking about it a lot. And I'm thinking it's a Random Land treasure chest. You know, kind of piratey. Kind of fits with the wood theme there. Looks like an old, old wooden ship to me. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that I have never seen. Look at this, we got the weird Las Vegas book. Prince Albert in a can, better let him out. All kinds of old, weird, handmade things. We got some Star Wars stuff. Look at that Wookiee mug. I've never seen that. My mom finds tons of rad stuff for this place. Look at this, we got the giant Magic Kingdom mask. We got all kinds of posters and prints in there. All kinds of old historic paper stuff. Ooh, look at, 
Okay, that is cool. A little bit of a Moana mug. Is that a Moana mug right there? Vintage Mickey stuff. All kinds of stuff in here. It has been way, way too long. Oh my gosh. What happened to the Butterfly King? His neck is broken. I see so much stuff in here I've never seen before, but I don't want to get too distracted. Everybody that comes down here is like, why don't you have any hats? I've brought a couple of hats, the few that I could spare from the online store at the moment and signed copies of the book, but I couldn't figure out how to put a tag in them. You don't want to put like a sticky, sticky tag in it and ruin it. And then Marty at the front desk came up with a great idea. I write the price on this little tag here, tape that to a sticky note, then stick the sticky note in the book so people can take it out without hurting the book. I thought that was actually particularly genius. Look at that clown motel mug over there. We brought back many things from adventures and road trips and we've made many crazy posters that no one's ever seen before. Look at this lost attraction poster for Hobbiton USA on the Redwood Highway. We got some random land stuff. Bro, and tons and tons of vintage Star Wars figures. These ones came all the way from Oklahoma. Come give them some new Oklahomes, uh, won't you? Okay, that was bad. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person that just really can't sit still. Being sick and laying around in misery, recovering from the medicine and the weakness afterwards and just getting back to my full strength. I've been riding those bikes, trying to just build up some strength, especially for the road trip. That has been driving me insane. So at least I've been able to work on all those exotic tiki masks. At least I've been able to do the book signings and all that kind of stuff. But we're getting now towards the end, dude. We're getting towards the end of the run here and soon we'll be back out on the road. Will we be on Route 66? Yes, we'll be on Route 66, at least for a little bit. At least that's the plan, but I don't wanna call it a whole Route 66 trip because of course this is London's first time out uh, back east where we're going and I wanna leave room for deviation or detours or randomness at the last second. Ooh, look at that. There's a Route 66 ashtray down there. Now, if you've ever seen any of my other road trip series, you'll know how little I like to plan these things out. I like to keep the spontaneity alive. I like to change directions with the wind if so needed, but the loose plan anyway is to do a little bit of Route 66. And then once we reach Missouri, we'll make a decision. Do we go all the way to Chicago? Do we deviate? What do we do? I mean, you know, I want to leave some of it up to the boy. But then lately I've been remembering how everybody's out on the road lately. Everybody's everywhere. Every attraction is so much more busy than it has been for the last few years because of course the COVID revenge travel, people making up for all the years they weren't vacationing and traveling. So I'm a little bit uh, panicked like, oh, maybe I should have booked some hotels at least for the beginning of the journey anyway. With all the crazy errands that I've been having to do and tinkies to finish and new camera tests, which you are participating in right now. And I very much appreciate that. It has been difficult to, uh, to really think about the trip, but it is coming up. We are less than uh, a week away, about a week away from hitting the road. Anyway, all right, we got some signed books in here. I got a few hats in here and uh, that's gonna have to do for the moment. I'll try to give some more to my mom to stick into the booth. By the way, this is down here in the orange circle and uh, it's called the Antique Station. People always ask me, what's the place called where you have your thing? It's called the Antique Station and there are many fine articles. Look at those Mounties back there. <laughs> many fine things in here, some of which I very much recognize, others I have never seen before. We have all kinds of crazy paper stuff, weird signed pictures. We got the Random Land sticker machine in here. We got the hats, we got the books. We got a weird 007 bag. We got toys for the kids. We've got VHS. We got a lot of stuff. Man, it's been a while since I've been in here though. I guess I gotta keep looking for some more. All right, we really pulled that off at the last second because they're actually closing the store right now. See, now in the past, I've done most of the off-the-cuff vlogs, like the sometimes vlogs, with a GoPro, but the GoPro would be so bad in low light, and not just low, low light, but like any low light, any indoor stuff that it would be really, really grainy, and it was no good. Now that we're setting out on the road, aside from just the big random land videos that are heavily edited and shot with the fancy camera and all that kind of stuff, we wanna be able to whip out a camera and go off the cuff. So I bought this little DJI camera here 
And uh, so far, so good. I don't normally talk about cameras or show behind the scenes or anything like that. I'm not a tech guy. I'm not a gearhead by any stretch of the imagination. But with everything else crowding upon me, I've realized the uh, videos have been rather scanty while I was sick and recovering. And uh, I want to try to get back into regular habit here because when we hit the road, we don't want to waste one single day's worth of adventure. Whew, we were just under the wire. They have now closed the Antique Mall, Antique Station, right here in the Orange Circle. So come on down, see the booth, say hi to my mom if she's in there. She often is. Anyways, normally, like I said, I would have had some kind of plan. I would have been doing a sometimes vlog or something somewhere interesting, or I would have uh, been filming a video about history or an edited video, a normal random land episode. But we got this new camera and uh, I've never used gimbals. I don't use selfie sticks or anything like that. I always hold the camera in my hand to film myself when I need to film myself. And this thing has sort of a funky little stabilizer on it, so I've got to get used to it. The only reason I thought this might be a good choice is because, like I said, London's going with me, and he'll undoubtedly have to use the camera sometimes or hold it. And I think he would feel a little more comfortable with it being a little more stabilized. So all this is basically a test, walking and talking, heading through the orange circle where I always hear the music from Back to the Future. I always hear, you know, Mr. Sandman playing in my head as I come through here or loving you lots and lots from that thing you do because of course that was filmed down here in the circle and uh, we've lost more and more of the antique stores over here my favorites are still around though we still have the antique station where my booth is at we still have the orange circle antique mall right over here but slowly 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 more and more all the orange circle is just becoming Chapman's food court basically we have all kinds of new restaurants and everything it's crazy. So anyway, that's the plan. The plan is Exoticon June 9th. I'm not doing Midsummer Scream because we're going to be out gone on the road. That's my normal like kind of meet and greet thing. That's the kind of normal uh, summer event that we have just so we can see all of our friends. So I am doing Exoticon June 9th. I'll put a link down below and all that kind of stuff. And uh, hopefully we'll sell as many Tiki masks as possible. Hopefully people bring cash. That would be nice. And then London and I are going to hit the road and then uh, to make as if to make up for the last month of relative inactivity compared to my normal uh, output we plan on filming the heck out of this trip we're planning on making the absolute very most of it look finally the sun came out it has been super gloomy and cloudy the last couple of days i've been working on these tiki masks speaking of which i better get home now and go see that little kitten Make sure Allie's cool and finish up the work. You want to come along? Eh, why not? Come along. All right, little shortcut over here through what they call Alley Plaza. But I always like to call the Owl Alley because of the Owl Cigar ghost advertisement still on the building. Look at that, five cents. I don't know how much cigars cost now, but I guarantee you they don't cost five cents, huh? Nothing costs five cents anymore. You know what's so funny? My grandpa, when I was a kid, I washed all the front windows of his house, the one right across the street from Disneyland. And he told me he was gonna give me some money if I did. I was probably, I don't know, five years old, six years old, something like that. And I washed all the windows and I windexed them and I worked all hard and he gave me a nickel. And I was like, a nickel? And he was like, back in my day, you could buy candy bar for a nickel. You could get all this stuff for a nickel. And I'm like, well, now it's my day. You need like 50 cents to get a candy bar, you know? which is pretty funny. And I think he gave me two quarters after that. And I just had that moment the other day because I was looking in like a Snickers bar was like, I can't even remember, but it was more than two bucks. I was like, two bucks for a 50 cent candy bar? Crazy. So we're living through one of those time periods where we're going to get to say, I remember when gas was a buck a gallon. And I remember when a Skittles bag cost 50 cents, including tax, you know. I feel so old. Anyway, I do not know what to do with this van over here. I feel like 2024 so far has been the year of projects. Not only do I have all those vintage bicycles, I'll show them uh, to you when I get it back, but I've got this van, of course, which uh, old reliable here. I got my money's worth out of it. The thing costs less than it would have cost for us to stay at the uh, Star Wars hotel, the ill-fated galactic whatever it was called. I think it's safe to say I had a lot more fun with this thing out on the road than I would have had 
you know, for two days in a hotel of any kind, um, even if that had been sort of my bag, which it never was, which is why I don't say anything about it because I never went and did it. But this guy has got some kind of electrical nonsense. There's still a little bit of a shutter in the engine. I got a friend who will replace the whole engine for me, like do all the labor. If I get it to Florida, we'll put a, you know, a new old engine, a rebuilt old engine in there. But that's going to cost a few thousand dollars, probably like four grand or something, plus getting it there and getting it back. It's like, is this thing even worth it? It needs to be rewired. That's the biggest thing. It needs electrical work. And I mean, everything else is working, just the windshield wipers aren't working and sort of the radio, they keep shorting out. And I've had it rewired a bunch of times just in the dashboard, but I think the whole dashboard needs to be taken off and the whole thing needs to be gone through. And that just really makes me like, uh. Funny thing is, I always wanted to own like a classic car, like an old vintage car, like a 50s car or 40s or 30s car or something like that. But I've never been mechanical. I grew up in apartments my whole life. I mean, my whole life, my backyard was the size of this, this bush right here, not very big. So we didn't have tools and we didn't know how to work with any of that kind of stuff. And sorry, I didn't have time to build this vlog to scale or to paint it. And if the camera's moving around weird, I'm still getting used to this thing. Anyway. I wanted to get an old car and I thought, no, why not relive my youth? You know, I was turning 40. This will be like my midlife crisis, getting an old van like I used to tour around the country with in a band. And now after having it, I remember, oh, this is why, this is why we got rid of the old tour vans because they break all the time. But uh, thank goodness I didn't get an old 50s car because if I can't handle a van from 1998, you know, mechanically or knowing what to do or who to call, then it's probably for the best that I don't have an old rust bucket from the 50s and uh, it was it was that that made me decide that maybe old bicycles were the way to go right because all right i'm never gonna live the dream of having like an old old car not till i'm like jay leno rich and i have a whole staff to work on them because lord knows i can't work on them uh, but i thought you know what i like vintage stuff i need some exercise i'm not allowed to do too much because the heart condition there's other stuff i can't do because the spine condition so one of the things that was recommended to me for exercise was a bicycle because you know you get tired you can kind of sit down and coast on it for a little while all that kind of stuff and i thought hmm, if i'm going to get a bicycle anyways and if i can't have an old car why not old bicycles and that's when i think the curse of the van followed me into bike land and to elaborate ugh, i'm gonna have to take you Back to the Casa de Scard, where I have ugh, more projects awaiting me. Oh, oh, every time it starts, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it works, you know, it gets me around, it helps me haul stuff, especially like wood for the tiki stuff or big furniture or bicycles. I have no other way to move the bicycles themselves around but this thing right here, but it is a gas guzzler. It does need a bunch of work. Hi, Dios mio. Speaking of old guy stuff, I always used to wonder when I'd be walking home to or from school or whatever, and I would just see that old car in the driveway at some old man's house. In fact, there's an old cool Ford truck really close to where I live now. And you always wonder like, why is it just sitting there? Why doesn't somebody do something with it? Well, now I know. All right, enough of my yap, but I think I have just enough gas in this old bucket of rust to, uh, to get us back to the house, I'll see you guys there. All right, well, old reliable at least got us home one more time, which is at least something to say for this beastly old tub of rust. Now, I got my money's worth out of it, you know, on those road trips and all that stuff. What's left to be decided is whether or not I put any more money into it ever, assuming I ever get any more money, or whether I push it in the ocean, I sell it at a big fat loss, I just continue to lug stuff around until it breaks down and I give it to cars for kids. I have no idea what's gonna happen with this thing. I neither have any mechanical friends that live near me who are willing to look into it or anything like that. Southern California is not a, is not a hotbed of uh, mechanical people anymore. But be that as it may, I had the curse of the van like I was telling you, and I thought, well, I better not own an old car. And in the meantime, I had had this bike over here, which I got for like 50 bucks or something, went to town with the spray can on. It's from the 80s or the early 90s, it's an old Murray bicycle. It squeaks, it's rusty and all that kind of stuff, but sort of fun to ride around on. I, thought, I love riding this bike. It's super fun, you know, help me lose weight, help me, uh, you know, build up my strength and get some exercise for the heart and all that kind of stuff. I want to get some vintage bikes and we went looking on Facebook Marketplace and found two being sold as a set of the most beautiful vintage bikes I've ever seen. Now these are Columbia bicycles. Columbia, I think the company was called Pope Manufacturing and then Westfield Manufacturing and then Westfield Columbia eventually after the Columbia bicycles. It was one of the earliest bike manufacturers in the United States from Westfield, Massachusetts. 
This is a 1955 model. So this guy is the same age as Disneyland, the Red Baron over here. And look at that. He's got the Springer front end, nice and deluxe right there. There's the old head badge, very hard to see. It's got the tank on it still. It's got the chain guard. It's got the beautiful rack. It's got the old vintage bike seat. I love this thing right here. Gorgeous, a little two-speed back hub. And then this is a very late 1940s, right after World War II example of another Columbia bicycle. And these were being sold, like I said, as a pair for less than half, well, less than one of these bikes would cost, right? So you're paying less than half of a normal kind of retail price for each bike if you buy them together. And I thought, perfect, you know, this way in London can ride with me or a friend can ride with me, I'll buy these two bikes. Well. To make a long story short, the guy that had these, the reason they were so inexpensive, he bought them out of state, he dismantled them and shipped them back here years ago. He worked uh, as a salesman, I believe, and it took me a long time to actually figure this out when it was happening. But as soon as I started riding these bikes around after a week or two, all the pedals one by one fell off, which is why you don't see any pedals on the bike at the moment. And what he had done was he had unknowingly put the right pedal on the left side and the left pedal on the right side and they're all differently threaded because the guy had had bike shops disassemble the bikes for him to ship them but he decided to put them back together himself and these are completely stripped out. This is a very long story. I'm going to make it as short as I possibly can. Basically I went to every single bike shop in Orange County, California. I went to every single person I could think of who might know anything about old bikes and because they aren't standardized parts, they don't make these parts anymore for these Columbia bicycles. I mean they make Schwinn parts and everything that's modern kind of goes on basically that same shape and size as all the old Schwinn parts but because these are earlier bikes they are not all standardized sizes. I was told by all the bike shops, oh, we can't replace this. I was like, can you look on eBay? Can you find parts? Can you tell me what to look for? It was a whole long story. But basically, the curse of the van must have followed me into the bike world because I could not get anybody to tell me these could be fixed, to try to fix them for me. I reached out recently on the internet. I was trying to figure some stuff out. I couldn't get anyone to give me any solid answers other than the people who are like, oh, I could fix it. Then they get it and go, oh, these aren't like the same as the Schwinn modern parts that you can replace them with. Nobody knew what to do. So they were living in the van for like a year. I put them away. Now, fast forward. And again, I'm sorry this story is so long, but believe me, it was much longer when I was living it. Fast forward, and I had come out with the book Tales from Random Land. Now we sold quite a lot of books and I paid, you know, the editor, I paid the guy who formatted the book, which happens to be my dad, he did a really great job. I paid my friends that helped me ship 2,000 books out. Um, but I've been backwards on money for a long time with taxes and other debts and stuff like that. So I paid down all my debts that I could pay down. I put everything else in savings for taxes. There was really no profit there. But after all that was done, I started sitting around thinking, you know what? Maybe I should treat myself. Maybe, you know, I, we sold quite a few books. Maybe I should get something fun. Maybe there should be just one little fun purchase from the money. I'm not like a luxury guy. I don't have a lot of hobbies, you know? And I thought, if there's one thing that I'd really like though, I just want one cool old bicycle it's actually just working. I just want to want, I just want to buy one that's a daily rider for somebody. It's going to work perfectly. And that leads me to last but not least, this beautiful bicycle right here. A very early 1950s. This is either 52, 53, or 54. I think it's 1953, but I've checked the catalogs and it only came in blue and red in the catalogs I could find. So when they made the green one, I don't know. But let's just say for the sake of argument, a 1953 Spiegel Airman. Sabrejet. Now this is a rare unusual bicycle. You don't see these every day. Spiegel was a department store, so like a Sears or a JCPenney, and uh, Airman was a, a sub-brand of bicycle, so this one was made by Monarch, but there were different manufacturers that used the Airman thing that made them for the Spiegel stores. And Sabrejet was a type of jet actually made in the 19, late 1940s, I think, but it made it sound futuristic and modern. This looks nothing like the actual airplane, but airplanes were cool and futuristic and jets were all the rage, right, in the 1950s. And this thing's got everything, right? A cool chain guard. I don't think the chain guard's original, but a cool chain guard nonetheless. It's got the original rack, the original paint. Look at it, it's all green. It kind of matches the book cover. I thought, this is perfect. The guy's like, yeah, I ride this thing around all the time. And he rode it around and I rode it around. I mean, the wheels are a little bent. That can be fixed and all that stuff. But the tires were good. This thing was ready to rock and I was stoked 
to rock on it. And then here comes the reason I'm telling you this whole entire long story, right? Because I had all the heartbreak of the pedals falling off of that thing and the other thing. Well, I got this and we're riding it around and Allie's riding her little yellow bike around with me. And like one of the first rides I ever did with her, I'm on this thing and I just feel snap. <gasps> I look down and I kid you not, that pedal was on the ground with my foot on top of it, no longer attached to the bike. But unlike the other ones where it was just stripped and someone had forced it in backwards and put some JB Weld and try to trick me and con me with these guys over here, this one actually snapped through the crank arm. So the actual metal arm just snapped clean through and it had clearly not been repaired or gussied up. Like the guy didn't con me or anything. It was just bad luck. I'm like, I'm cursed. This is so negative. But I thought, okay, this one was a much more commonly produced bike. Uh, Monarch made it, so that's very similar to Schwinn. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe they can just replace the crank arms for me. And I headed over to a bike shop that I had been to before that told me they couldn't help with these. And I happened to walk in on just the right day because we're like, well, there is one guy who comes in part-time and works on these old bikes. He's in there working on something ancient. I walk in the back room and he's working on an old Columbia bike. And I bring this in, he goes, you know what? I think I've got a crank in my archives. I think I got one of these, it'll work perfectly. Come back in a couple hours. And he had fixed the Sabre Jet. So I at least had this one good old nice bicycle to ride. I was so stoked. I was telling him about these other bikes and he's like, well, you know, you ever been to the cycle swap meet? It's the big motorcycle swap meet that they do in Long Beach. And I hadn't been for years. I think I filmed it last time I went. And I'd only gone the one time. I go, no, you know what? I haven't gone down there. He goes, go down there and see if you can buy some cranks. He goes, I don't know why they told you they couldn't fix these. If you get new cranks for them, I'm pretty sure that I can fix them. I'm pretty sure I can replace them and get them in there. We can just use the same hubs and the same blah, blah, blah. I don't know, all the terminology. I'm like, oh my gosh, I found the one guy who knows what he's talking about when it comes to these bikes, right? So he's like, I'm not going to swap me, but go down there and look for this, look for this. I'm wandering around and I'm like kind of lost. I'm a little bit out of my element. I don't know how to talk to crusty old scavengers about bicycle parts that they've been hoarding up in their garages for years and years and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of think I know what I'm doing. There's a few people who recognize me from the video. So I'm talking to them and I'm getting an old seat for this bicycle since that seat's kind of worn out. I got an old seat for another Columbia. And I came across two cranks. I Think would work but i'm not sure i'm kind of out of my element but the guy sold them to me really cheap so i'm like okay hopefully these will work they're they're not stripped as far as anybody can tell so hopefully these will work and then i knew i needed to look for pedals so i'm leaning over looking at the pedals some guys are like those are pretty good pedals and i look up and it's the guy from the bike shop he actually made it to the thing he sold me each set of pedals for five bucks because he happened to be working for his friend at this booth and i now should have all the parts to fix these old bicycles. Whether I keep them or end up selling them after that, I don't know, but I mean, look at them. They're so cool. And for the five minutes they were working, they were so, so fun to ride. They're head turners, they're super fun. You know, I thought, oh, how cool would it be to get Tyler and George on some of these? Maybe I can get on my Sabre Jet, so I might just keep them yet. If I can get them fixed and if I can afford to do the whole thing. Unfortunately, this is the bummer, the guy at the bike shop I was talking about, uh, he has his two week vacation right now. And so I can't do anything about them until I'm back from the road, unless I find somebody else who's equally confident that they can do the repairs. But the even crazier thing is, after he had fixed this bike, he was like, yeah, I thought I saw you riding that bike around. I'm like, what do you mean you saw me riding that bike around? And Allie and I will load the bikes in the van and we'll go to you know, Irvine Park or we'll ride around Anaheim or we'll go up to Fullerton and ride around up there or we'll go to Orange or we'll go wherever. So I'm like, what, what do you mean you saw me riding this bike? I've only had this one for two days. He goes, yeah, I think I saw you on such and such street, which is the street I live on. It turns out the guy lives four houses down from me. Now I'm not gonna go knock on his door. We're not that kind of friends, not yet. but. He lives 40 houses down from me. So in a weird way, I thought this bike was going to be cursed. I thought it was going along with the rest of the curse. You know, the pedal snapped off, but it actually led me to my bicycle guardian angel Aww. or something of that nature. If, uh, if old, you know, crusty bicycle fixing guys can be guardian angels, well, then he's my bike guardian angel. And I've actually gotten this one fixed. This one's been riding around every day. And then I've got these ones 
hopefully I've got all the parts for them. And hopefully if I can't get him to fix them this week, you know, cause he's going to be gone on vacation. I can find somebody who can now that I know a little bit more about what I'm talking about because he explained the whole thing and walked me. That's all I needed. I needed one of those old crusty guys who knows everything to walk me through what happened and what I needed to do to fix it. And I think I found it. So that's a long, boring story. I know nobody really cares about that except for me, but this has been a year long thing. And everybody always asks me about the van. How's the van doing? You still got that van? What are you going to do with the van? And nobody knows I've had a much crazier project thing on my mind this whole time. Like forget the van. I just want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. Anyway, that's one thing I've been doing to try to regain my strength, especially after the hospital visit and the medicine, which was even worse than being in the hospital. Let me tell you, uh, just laying there for two weeks, just immobilized was horrible and annoying. And I get nauseous every time I think about it. I was so weak. I could, I went to Disneyland to film that last video. I think I was only actually there for like three hours and I had to sleep for two days to make up for it. So I wasn't at full strength. So I've been trying to ride the airmen and build back up some strength over there. And in the interim, I've been working on the Tiki since I can actually sit at the workbench and kind of work on these and the last stuff, the painting, the coating and all that stuff. It's hard to get them aged looking. You gotta get them a little crusty and dirty. You don't want a shiny brand new Tiki like this guy just been painted. You can see kind of shiny, kind of glowy, no good. It needs to be coated. It needs to be dulled down. It needs to be oily and greasy and dusty and kind of fun. So they're all different shapes and sizes. Some of them are absolutely huge. We've got the Disneyland replica ones and I've just been pouring all the work I can into these, obviously signing and finishing the books. And then now trying to get ready to pack up and get out of here a week from now, right after Exoticon. So if any of you can make it out to Exoticon, come by. Get a tiki mask, help fund the old road trip, you know, take the money and fun. That's what we're going to do. Um, it's a fundraiser, right? A little fundraiser. I'm going to take my 17 year old out on the road and uh, hopefully make it out to some really epic destinations. We're going to be filming a lot. And if this camera works at all, because I have no idea whether we're recording sound, I have no idea what the video looks like. I have never used this before. Literally, the first shot of this video is the first time I turned it on, basically. We'll have not only our normal edited uh, random land videos, but we should also have some fun sometimes vlogs, some off the cuff stuff, some unedited stuff, and fly that thing up in unexpected places see unexpected things, maybe meet unexpected people. Who knows? I don't know what to expect. It's unexpected. Anyway, I know you can't tell, but I have a lot more work to do, uh, including cleaning up all of this crazy mess after I finished the last batch of the almost 30 tiki's that I'm going to have at Exoticon. You got the Adventureland gate guy over here. He's huge. Got the original four 1956 tiki's from Disneyland. So I've been steeped in 1950s stuff lately for some reason. And we've had projects galore, obviously, and work to do galore and uh, recovery and healing and sickness galore. And now there's a little kitten inside, which is the cutest little thing in the entire world. So much distraction, so much craziness. It's going to feel good to be out on the road with the horizon before us, filming adventures, getting back to what we're good at over here, or at least I hope we're good at, on Random Land, the Sometimes Vlog, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all I've got to say. This is really a big test. I don't know if you'll ever see this. If I uploaded it, obviously the camera worked and then huzzah, something finally worked out of the box. And uh, there you go. So that's what I've been doing. That's the big update. That's the plan. It's a very loose plan. It's a very wacky plan. I was getting frustrated. I'm not going to lie to you. I was getting a little frustrated and a little depressed. Like, why is everything going wrong? And right when I wanted to leave on the first road trip of the year, I got sick and I had to spend two weeks down instead of two weeks out on the road and all this kind of stuff. But I think, you know, hopefully everything happens for a reason and I think it'll all work out for the best. And even though I'm a little behind now and I feel like I got to catch up and I got to get out on the road and all that stuff, I've been trying to take the recovery slow. Like I said, one of the first things I did was rush out to do the video at Disneyland about the Tiki Mask history and only three hours there making that video. And I was sick as a dog for two more days. So I took it pretty, that was like last week. So I've taken it pretty seriously. I've been very careful building up exercise, eating very carefully. I changed my whole diet, lots of fiber, lots of fruits and things and stuff that I don't normally like eating. And I think I'm on the mend. I think I'm on the mend and that is for the best. So I'm gonna stand back here and get a little bit of a picture right here. 
There's my, there's our default picture. And I forgot that normally these off the cuff things, these sort of not really about a subject, not at an epic destination videos, they're called the sometimes vlogs. They're normally much more unedited, but I'm getting used to this camera. And at the beginning of them, I usually say, it's a sometimes vlog, yeah, yeah. It's a vlog that happens sometimes. So there, I gave it to you at the end. All right, we've done our duty. I gotta get back to work, go home, sleep well. All the links for everything I was talking about are down below in the description. I'm sorry that I haven't been with you as much. I'm sure that YouTube is gonna smash down all the videos and the next few videos are gonna be not recommended to everybody's feed. So if you're wondering what happened to the road trip, just go look and one week from now, you will start seeing road trip videos right here so make sure you're still subscribed make sure you click the bell or smash the thing smash the like click the bell smash the bell do the bell whatever you need to do uh or go check youtube.com slash justin scarred and uh, well you found this video so hopefully you'll find those anyway i don't know what else to say because this entire day i don't know if you can tell i've been completely scramboozled and bamboozled and too boozled to bam my brain is a little bit high but that's okay we're getting back to what we know and love the best. Heading out on the road for some adventure. And I will see you guys there. All right guys, I couldn't leave you without some bonus kitten footage. We've been calling her Pepper. I don't know if that name will stick. But look at her, doesn't she look like she's covered with a little bit of Pepper? Aw, what a sweetie. She likes to purr. She likes to chill. She likes to cuddle. What a cutie. I don't know if she can stay here forever. If Allie has her way, she will. Or she might need to find another good home, but first we're gonna give her at least a week to rest and recover from all her little traumas. Make sure nobody in the neighborhood, you know, turns up looking for her. I don't think so though. She was pretty darn stray. But well, she's been tamed very fast. She's a very sweet girl. Anyway, go home, sleep well. There's a kitten for you. See you later.